Yep, done. Okay, uh, hello, it's uh, me again with yet another tech talk. So today it's going to be uh, something related to Mattermost and uh, somebody's, okay. Yeah, um, and uh, it'll be uh, similar uh, to before. I'll be starting with a very uh, basic level zero implementation of um, WebSockets and then slowly build up on top of that uh, to reach our final uh, current architecture used by Mattermost. And uh, yes, uh, as before, please feel free to stop me anytime and ask any questions. Okay, so let's uh, start with a very quick uh, WebSocket 101. Uh, what is a WebSocket? So a client, one, one, mm -hmm. a client will first send a request to the server. It'll be like this with some upgrade um, and connection headers and the server responds back with a HTTP 101 response. And after that, we have a persistent TCP connection between client and server and uh, they can send or receive whatever they want to do. Okay, so with that being said, what are our objectives here? So once we have established a TCP connection, we want uh, the server to basically broadcast updates to all the connected clients. It can be like a one-to-one one -one for DMs, one-to-many or even one-to-all. Okay, so with that out of the way, Let's start with the core design. Let's start with a very basic, very simple implementation. Let's just have a map of user ID to uh, connection. So super simple. Whenever we want to send to a specific user, we just get the connection from the map, just uh, send it off to the user. Or if we want to uh, broadcast to a set of users, we just iterate the map filter and just said, yeah, very simple. But we have some issues here. So number one is that network turns out to be a bottleneck, right? So if you have a slow connection, that means you are basically affecting all the other users to which you are going to send, right? And uh, more importantly, there is uh, this is not a very good way to handle timeouts also, right? So if uh, an attacker uh, creates a WebSocket connection and deliberately does not accept requests, so you would, let's say that you send a timeout, right? So you would have to wait for five seconds for it to expire and then only you can move to uh, the next request, right? So if the attacker continuously just waits for five seconds, so every time you want to send to that connection, you have to uh, pause for five seconds. So let's uh, move on to our next iteration. Let's change this net con with a buffered con. So essentially we apply a buffered channel on top of this um, connection. So with that, what we can do, what we see is that there is no head of line blocking here. So we can, from, from this map, we can just uh, push all of the uh, broadcast messages to each of the buffer channel and everything is asynchronous from that point onward, right? Because this runs in its own go routine and then the uh, connection here can just like consume and uh, send it uh, irrespective of however slow or fast that connection is. And, uh, and, and another advantage is that now slow connections can be closed automatically, right? Because since this buffer channel automatically gives us a sort of a, a metric for back pressure, that means we know that if the buffer channel is full, that means e either the connection is slow or the user is deliberately not consuming requests, right? So if, if we come to this default place, yes, we just close the connection, that's it. So it uh, leads to a very natural and idiomatic way to uh, handle uh, close, uh, sorry, slow connections. But we still have another problem here. We have an iteration bottleneck. That means that if you have 5,000 connections, even if the send to each channel is asynchronous. Now you have to iterate through all of 5,000 connections for, uh, for, a, for a single broadcast request to complete, right? So until you have iterated all of the 5,000 entries in the map, your broadcast is not complete, right? So let's move to a V2 version. Now, what do we do here is that we bring a buffer channel on top of this map. So, now what has happened is that 
this a single broadcast is completely independent of any number of connections we have right because we have a bigger buffer channel at the front of the map which takes care of consuming all of the events and then it sends all of the uh, events individually to each of the buffer channel and the, another advantage of that is now the the websocket architecture itself can apply proper back pressure to the application itself right previously uh, the application can generate like hundreds of requests per second and it will just keep on pushing the updates to the clients irrespective of i mean the, the application has no way to know whether the clients are being bottlenecked there is too many events going on or what's happening right now we know that if the buffer channel is full that means that okay the the application is unable to broadcast the messages with the given rate of which it is being pushed into so we can just block the request and then uh, with that uh, apply back pressure to the front layers of the application like the api layer so in our code base this part is called as the web hub source code is here and this part is called as the web core but we still have one last problem here which is all of this runs in a single code right so uh, the the send here is it it's not utilizing it to multiple codes now we come to our current architecture which is you have this entire thing replicated across multiple codes so to achieve that what we do is that we get the user id we hash that and we map that to any of the uh, uh, indexes here and then we do the exact same thing here so essentially like everything is same but it's split across multiple cpus and yeah that is the current architecture right now uh before i move on does anybody have any questions no okay okay so uh yeah uh, right now our architecture is uh, pretty stable everything is good let's add some features on top of it so if we have an active tcp connection now we know that tcp will guarantee uh, message delivery in an ordered way it will handle all retransmissions slow network fast network everything tcp will do on its own but there is a problem here in case of a reconnect or let's say that uh, we have a mobile device and then we we the connection suddenly drops due to a slow network or anything then tcp does not guarantee anything right so all of the messages here or even here it gets lost right so now the mattermost client uh, if for i mean as long as the connection was active it was getting a steady stream of messages but now when the connection is gone it does not know what is its current state so it has to do like a huge big sync request and then get everything back because it does not know exactly what it has missed right so what we need to do here is that when the connection breaks we should not discard this buffer channel right so we keep this but what about the tcp socket so this part is something which is handled inside the kernel itself right we cannot access that because it's inside the operating system what we need to do is we need to have a replica of this data in our application and when the client reconnects it will send the last seen sequence number so every message in the stream will have a sequence number it will send last seen last seen sequence number and then um, the server will just start sending from that point onwards right now let's get to the implementation aspect of it so we can see like this this uh, feels and acts very much like a buffer channel but there is one missing feature it the buffer channel needs to be seekable you need to go to a particular point in the buffer channel and then start sending from that point onwards right so channels we use what is actually inside a channel which is a circular buffer so we just use the circular buffer what uh, we'll do now is that the this the main queue we'll call it the active queue and then we are calling it as a dead dead queue so essentially when 
uh, we write a WebSocket message to uh, the network connection. We also make the same write to a circular buffer, which is uh, which should be the approximate size of a TCP buffer. And like this is a configurable size. It depends on the sysadmin or how much of a, a reliability guarantee that a sysadmin wants to. Um, uh, wants to make. If you have more messages, obviously you can have like more. Uh, you can make it more robust to a message loss, but uh, at the cost of extra memory. That's a very brief overview of the reliable WebSockets architecture. Now I'll just do a very quick overview of the code level. I'll just quickly go through that because like yeah, there's a lot of stuff inside it. Uh, so this is uh, your web construct. This is the uh, actual WebSocket connection. And this is this is actually the active queue here. It's just called as the send queue in the code base. And these two, uh, dead queue and dead queue pointer basically consists of, uh, comprises the, the uh, circular buffer. And active just denotes whether it is being actively sent or uh, the client has disconnected uh, from this. So basically on disconnect, we mark it as active false. And then when a client reconnects to the server, it will first uh, send the connection ID. Connection ID is like an abstract identifier uh, that each client gets and it persists through multiple uh, reconnects. And then it has to send the last in sequence number once uh, the server gets set, it basically gets all of the old queues and uh, then initializes the web construct. And uh, when it registers it, it marks the old connection as active. And then it just starts doing its stuff. And uh, in the uh, when it starts to consume messages, there's a very uh, simple uh, logic here. It just checks if the sequence is zero or not zero. If it's not zero, that means it is uh, not a fresh start, as in like it has seen some messages prior to it. So what we need to do is we need to check in the dead queue for this sequence. And if we uh, find the message, we'll just um, drain all the dead queue first. And if we don't find the message, that means, okay, uh, our size of the dead queue wasn't uh, big enough or some, I mean, it is like it wants to uh, have a message which is very much in the past and yeah, we just don't have it. In that case, we clear the dead queue, set a new connection ID and uh, just reset everything and send the hello message, basically telling the client that, sorry, I don't have uh, what you want. Basically we have lost it and just, yeah, think of it as a fresh start. And then after that, uh, it starts consuming from the, active queue again and that was it awesome great any questions for igniva no cool igniva can you share those slides if you haven't already in the in the channel yeah sure i'll do that cool one maybe question that might be an interesting follow-up is how we handle broadcasting to in the HA environment and sort of the connections that happen across the cluster. So basically I didn't want to go too deep into it. So uh, what I uh, mentioned in the last slide, the whole, all things are perfectly balanced. That thing is exactly replicated across multiple machines. So once we do a broadcast, we broadcast that into the local, cluster and then send another request through the clustering mechanism, which brought, does the same thing across every node in the cluster. Awesome. Other questions? No? Okay, cool, great. Any other topics people wanna to bring up for the developer meeting? No? All right. Well, we'll keep it a short one. Thanks, everybody. Stick around for Innovation Weekly if you want to do so.